check out this free video and make sure you hit like and subscribe. Yeah. All right, uh, mailbag at wrestlingobserver.com if you want to send questions. We got time for some here today. This person here says, uh, SmackDown celebrating 25 years this year. Uh, do you think it's possible we could see the return of Kevin Kelly? I mean, you never say never, but I'm not expecting it at all. Mm, I'd be very, I'd be very surprised. Now, this person here has a good question. Why is Odyssey Jones not being used since being drafted to Raw? They, you know, why do they do that? They've uh, done that to a couple of people. Actually. A lot of people. No, every every year they do it to half a dozen people that don't. That they may wrestle like two or three times the rest of the year. I mean, remember um, Zion Quinn and... Yeah, I don't think that Von, guy ever wrestled in the... Maybe like once. He, he, he did one or two squashes. Von Wagner did like nothing and then got cut. Um, but every every year, I mean, um, Isle of Dawn and uh, Alba Fire did nothing for months and months and months. Now they're tag champs, but they did nothing with them for a long time. Every year they draft people and um, Gable Steveson. You know, I mean, you can go on the list. There's usually five or six every year that that happens to. They're They're drafted and then... They go in the witness protection program. This person here says, you mentioned that uh, Shinsuke Nakamura has not been on TV, but it has nothing to do with training uh, UFC. Well, helping train UFC fighters. So where is he? Why is he gone? He's in the witness protection program, too. Okay, so another one. You know, the same as, you know, I mean, look, people try to say that, like, Triple H and Tony Khan are, like, opposites booking. They're a lot more similar than people think. Although I will say, I do think that the storylines on, on tonight's show really wove together well. I know they were really good. But I'm just saying, like, you know, that happens on, you know, there's people. And you sometimes you're just not on TV because they don't got any ideas for you right now. And, you know, Nakamura's, I think he's probably fine getting that big paycheck and uh, surfing and, and doing jujitsu. Not a bad life. Not a bad life. Person wants to know whatever happened to Matt Bentley, cousin of Shawn Michaels, who wrestled in TNA for many years. Ma remember him, Michael Shane, right? Yeah. I have no idea. Do you ever hear what happened to him? I do not know. It just says retired. Mm hmm. I just, I just remember he was in TNA for a while, and then yeah, don't know. It looks like he hasn't wrestled in years and years. So. Oh God, it's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah, probably at least almost a decade, actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember what happened to him. Just, I mean, if he wanted to wrestle, he could have. You know, it wasn't like, you know, probably just felt that, you know, he couldn't make enough money at it and he had to do something significant, something else with his life. This person wants to know if Simone Johnson is still training as a wrestler at the Performance Center. I don't think so. Um, I don't, you know, um, I think this is her, her role. You know, she's being groomed for an authority figure on the main roster at some point. Or, or she's just going to do this for a while. I don't know. This person here says, what were Vince's expectations heading into the big event? Do you believe he was going to set what had to be a North American attendance record for pro wrestling? He didn't mark it outside of Toronto. It's hard to imagine he had huge expectations. Was he testing the power of Hulkamania in advance of a planned Pontiac WrestleMania? Or did the event open up his eyes to the potential? What made him choose the stadium? Was he looking for a big venue? Just looking for a better understanding of how this event came to happen in the first place. Okay. It was not... Vince wanting to go there it was the Canadian National Exhibit wanting to bring Vince in so um, they thought you know wrestling wrestling has has been big in Toronto you know it's it's had many periods of, of it's one of the best wrestling cities in the in the world and they had done um, you know they had done big stadium shows there um, over the years Ric Flair and Harley Race did a real big stadium show there a couple of years earlier um, not at that level. I mean, you know, when, when I say, like, Ric Flair and Harley Race did, like, 20,000 people, which, you know, at the time was a, a great, great number. And the Canadian National Exhibit brought them in. They did. They handled the publicity locally. Um, so I'm sure that they took some of the burden as far as the cost went. And um, I don't, I mean, I remember when it happened, everyone was expecting a very big crowd. And they actually did over 60,000 people. I think they probably claimed 75 or something, you know. But um, the paid was like uh, 61,400, and I think the number in the building legit was 64. And it was the largest crowd and the largest gate in wrestling history up to that point in time. Um, but it was it was more them bringing 
um, in, you know, in. And it wasn't, you know, did anyone expect? I mean, with all that publicity and everything like that with the exhibit, um, it was kind of expected they would do a real big crowd. But selling out, um, I can't say that was expected going in from what I remember. Um, did that help? Um, you know, as far as uh, the idea of booking the uh, the Silver Dome for Hogan and Andre, yes, because the the deal with the Silver Dome was, um, you know, they 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 thought they had a match that could set the record and break the record of the Hogan Orndorff match the year before, and the difference was obviously for WrestleMania, which did seventy eight thousand, was this was marketed worldwide. The other one was only marketed in Toronto, so they had that going for them. Plus, the idea is is when they chose Detroit they wanted a city not far from Toronto so the Toronto fans would come and you know Detroit you know has had its ups and downs as a wrestling city it was actually Pontiac but you know like there was they basically as I recall the idea it was like there's Columbus Ohio and there's all these cities you know there's a lot of cities within a driving distance um, you know in Michigan and Ohio and or Ontario and places like that and, and other places that were within a, a good one day drive of Pontiac. So they thought that it was a good centralized location that they could draw from a lot of different markets. The other thing was is that they, um, they blacked it out of pay-per-view and they did no closed circuit anywhere near there. So, you know, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't watch it any other way if you lived there, but go to the event. So, um, you know, that was part of the marketing of the whole thing. So, uh, but yeah, that, that, the fact that Toronto did that, did that lead to um, Pontiac? It, it pretty much did, yeah. It, it gave them the confidence to go, um, yeah, we've already proven we can, with, with, a, with a one market promotion that Ho Hogan for a big match can do, you know, 64. So um, with Andre the Giant and national promotion and months and months of build, promoting in multiple markets, yeah, we could do real well there. And finally, this person says, I know it's on collision in this week's Dynamite. The commentary booth has moved to the stage, and there's no pyro anymore. Is that a cost-cutting measure? Um, I presume it's a... I mean, as far as moving, it's probably um, Michael Mansuri. I mean, he's in charge of that stuff. It's probably just his thing. I mean, WWE at times had moved the commentators up there, and other times, the you know, it's one of those things over the years, they change. Um, so I think th that would not be a cost-cutting thing as far as removing the pyro yeah probably is um you know the probably something that felt like we're gonna put the state i don't whatever yeah yeah cody rhodes versus solo sequoia or whatever his last name is paul paul newman is watching this match <laughs> and he's not Excuse on me? cody's side <laughs> what's the matter Absolutely nothing. Everything's so, great. You know, Cody did say that he was looking for a manager. I think him and Paul Newman would be a... <laughs> what a handsome pair. <laughs> yeah. A dashing duo. That guy's a movie star, isn't he? Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today, and don't miss out.